Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part three of our evaluation of the large adrenal mass. And last time we left off beginning to talk about lymphoma, and lymphoma is a really interesting uh, uh, tumor to involve the adrenal gland. It's typically characterized by large tumors, often 10 centimeters or greater in size. It tends to infiltrate, so it displaces vessels rather than the appearance of adenocarcinoma, primary adrenal adenocarcinoma, which uh, invades things. The masses generally expand and infiltrate the glands, often maintaining their triangular appearance. Some primary adrenal uh, lymphomas can manifest it as necrotic tumors, um, but most of them are fairly homogeneous. It can be a real challenging lesion. They're often bilateral, which kind of makes it a little bit easier at times, but there's a range of appearances. Now, here's a good example. This patient actually presented to pancreatic conference with what looks like a mass in the head of the pancreas. There's also a large left adrenal mass. This ended up being lymphoma involving both the pancreas and involving the adrenal gland. But you could see a large, solid adrenal mass. You can go through a long differential diagnosis, but because there was extra adrenal disease, it made it a lot easier to kind of put two and two together. Also, you can see by the left kidney, in addition to the large mass, it looks like maybe some infiltration of the perirenal space, which is also very good for the process of lymphoma. Here it is on the coronal views, volume rendering. Another patient, large mass in the region of the adrenal, encasing but not narrowing the patient's celiac, extending to and involving the left kidney. Well, what is this? Could be bulky nodes. You could think about a retroperitoneal mass. But you can see it's homogeneous. It's relatively infiltrating and smooth. It encases the vessels, and that encasement pattern of both the left renal artery and vein that vascular appearance is really something we think about in lymphoma. Lymphoma goes to the perirenal space by the kidney. It's infiltrating. And this is an example of primary adrenal lymphoma. Vessel encasement, not occlusion, soft, homogeneous, infiltrating. Just a really nice appearance of primary adrenal lymphoma. Another patient. Here you see bilateral masses. Yes, it could be METS. Unlikely, I guess it could be pheochromocytoma. Unlikely to be a primary adrenal carcinoma with a secondary lesion, of course. METS is at the top of my list. But here you see large, relatively hypovascular masses, some cystic changes on the left side. Kind of, sort of, with a good imagination, maintains the adrenal shape, sort of, though. Not the greatest, but maybe a little bit on the axial views. And this was primary lymphoma as well. Just a beautiful example. Look at the size of those masses. Look at the infiltration. Really large, bulky tumors. Just a really nice example of what we were talking about, right? Large masses infiltrating, really nicely shown. And here it is again with some narrower windows. Again, the hypodensity, the infiltration, you got to think about lymphoma. This case is not the most perfect diagnosis, but it's something you need to think about. Here it is very nicely in the cinematic rendering images. You see both the solid and cystic components very nicely shown. Another example, large left adrenal mass. Remember I showed you that case of an adenoma, this giant adenoma? This is a large mass, homogeneous, could be many things on the non-contrast scan. You give IV contrast, look at the arterial phase imaging. It really doesn't enhance to any degree. You could see it there, solid mass. And here it is on the coronal views. Well, what could this be? I guess it could be a primary adrenal carcinoma. It could be, in theory, metastasis. There's some vascularity, but not a whole lot. Well, this ended up being primary lymphoma of the adrenal gland. So you can see it can be somewhat challenging. It's not going to be a perfect diagnosis. In this article by Al Harani, primary adrenal lymphoma without lymphadenopathy or extra nodal disease is rare. Secondary adrenal involvement is seen in about 4% of NHL and 43% of the time it's bilateral. About two-thirds of patients with bilateral adrenal involvement had adrenal insufficiency. So under your causes of adrenal insufficiency, we always think about acute bleeds when they're bilateral, but also lymphoma would be something to think about. The article then goes on to say some of the things I've mentioned to you already.
Adrenal lymphoma tends to grow in an infiltrative manner, maintaining the adrenoform appearance. However, it can progress and have heterogeneous enhancement with necrotic or cystic components, which are then more challenging. On CT, an adrenal lymphomatous mass can be homogeneous without washout features. Um, but again, the similarity to other tumors, not uncommon. And again, calcification is rare in lymphoma in general, unless the patient's been treated. So big mass with calcification, then I'm more apt to be thinking about a primary adrenal carcinoma. Now, when you look at that list I showed before of bilateral adrenal masses, lymphoma is number three in terms of frequency behind pheos and tuberculosis, okay, which is infection. Now, another example, here's a good case of B-cell lymphoma involving the adrenal, but also the kidney and the nodal regions. Non-contrast, look at the extent of involvement, look at the encasement of the aorta, here it is on the arterial phase imaging. A little bit of enhancement, but not a lot. Large bulky tumor displacing the spleen and displacing the pancreas forward. Involvement of the cruise of the left hemidiaphragm. The patient's involvement of the upper pole of the left kidney is very clearly seen as well. Extension into the upper pole, involvement in the upper pole, bulky adenopathy and extensive tumor infiltration. Really nicely shown in this example. And again, here is the volume rendering showing you those masses. And here's the cinematic rendering, okay? Really nicely showing you the components that are solid. Remember, things that are fluid density on cinematic tend to be red. This is more of a solid infiltrating process. Very nicely shown on this example. Now, the next tumor to mention is one of our favorites, pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma, the classic thing was patients present with hypertension, unexplained, vascular, adrenal lesion, it's a pheo. Now, the fact is half the pheos we find are incidental findings. Their appearance is variable. 10% have calcification. Remember, pheos have the rule of 10. 10% 10 are malignant, 10% are hypervascular, 10% are bilateral. Pheos can be associated with syndromes and when they are syndromic, they tend to be smaller. Uh, in the absence of metastasis, at times it's hard to diagnose or it's almost impossible to tell whether a pheo is or is not malignant. Now, when you look at non-contrast scans, there's not much to say about this left adrenal mass. It's a mass. It's denser than the kidney. It's not a classic adenoma. There's no fat. But it could be an adenoma. It could be a lipid poor adenoma. It could be a met. Could be a lot of things, could be a pheo. Well, so what do we do? Measured 42 Hounsfield units non contrast. Now we give contrast and enhances. It's a hypervascular lesion enhancing to 150 Hounsfield units. The rule is anything that enhances above 130, we used to say 120, but let's say 130 is a pheochromocytoma to proven otherwise. The only thing that really can fool you is a vascular med from renal cell carcinoma, specifically clear cell renal cell carcinoma. But that's easy because then you'll see either a renal mass or you'll see a partial nephrectomy or a classic nephrectomy. Now, uh, an important pitfall about pheochromocytomas is they wash out quickly. So in this case, you can see it goes from that 150. Here's just some more views of that and it goes down to 84. So it'd be a washout of greater than 60%. Now we talk about washouts for adenomas. So maybe this is just a lipid poor adenoma. That's why when things are over 130, maybe even 120, it's not gonna be an adenoma, it's gonna be a pheo. And pheos wash out, that's a very important pitfall. Just a really nice example, here's some of the delayed phase imaging. But it makes the point on delayed phase imaging, there's no way typically you can diagnose a pheochromocytoma because it's just a soft tissue density, which looks like many other lesions from metastasis to lipid poor adenomas and everything in between. Another example, look at this patient's left adrenal on this non-contrast scan with one set of images. You couldn't tell if that was the kidney or the adrenal, but let's say it's the adrenal. And here it is when you give IV contrast. The last case I showed you, the adrenal was very vascular and diffusely very vascular. Here you see more central necrosis. Could this be a primary adrenal carcinoma? Yes. Could this be a MET? In theory, yes. But just to show you that pheos are not always purely vascular.
Here it is on the reconstruction view, nicely sitting by the upper pole of the left kidney. Another one, incidental finding right adrenal gland, solid mass, smooth. It enhances on the arterial phase imaging and venous phase imaging, but it doesn't enhance all that much. It's not as vascular as some of the lesions I've shown you, but it is somewhat vascular. Again, lab values are important to get. This was also a pheochromocytoma. But again, I've now shown you very vascular lesions. I've shown you lesions that are somewhat cystic. I showed you lesions that are not all that vascular. So there's really a range. Here's another example, a very vascular seven centimeter pheochromocytoma. Central necrosis, so it's not uncommon to see central necrosis. The lesion has some prominent vascularity around it. Image on your left, you see the vessels tracking by the right lobe of the liver. The central necrosis, the large solid mass, classic pheochromocytoma. Unusual appearances. In this case, there's a lesion infiltrating the, left adre the right adrenal, rather. Now, you could say it could be lymphoma. That's a thought. Could it be malignancy like a carcinoma? That's a thought. But it's something infiltrating. I have to admit on the image on the right, I'm going to say lymphoma. But when you look at all of the images here, there is a mass, there's some rim enhancement, but then it infiltrates around the mass into the perirenal space, pararenal space. Again, I got to be thinking lymphoma. This was the most unusual pheochromocytoma I've seen. Now, I did think about perhaps this was a pheo that bled. Pheos can bleed, and if it bled, then you could see some soft tissue around it, which can simulate infiltration, but this stayed the same, so this was not a bleed. This was an infiltrating pheochromocytoma, a very, very unusual appearance. Now, I mentioned pheos can be bilateral 10% of the time. Um, this was an unusual case with bilateral pheos and bilateral renal cells. Well, when you have bilateral pheos, you got to be thinking syndromes. Von Hippolinda was one of the classic ones. Here, the lesion on the right is a centimeter. The lesion on the left is five centimeters in the adrenal. Multiple renal tumors are present as well. So when you think about syndromes, pheochromocytoma is part of a number of different syndromes, including things like von Hippolindau. And there you nicely see the renal mass as well as the left adrenal mass. Now, what about this case? Right up a quadrant pane, there's a mass in the adrenal region over 10 centimeters. But when you give contrast, it's really cystic. Solid, but cystic. Could this be perhaps a primary adrenal carcinoma? Could this be a complex adenoma? I don't think so. But it's a very large lesion with various enhancement. And again, we like to think of pheo as bearing very vascular lesions. This is a wonderful example of a pheochromocytoma that is not very vascular. Or this case. This is the best example I have, it's a number of years old, of a cystic pheochromocytoma. So we speak about cystic pheos. This was an incidental finding. I thought it was a primary carcinoma. You also could have thought about some cystic lesion that bled. But look at the thickened wall, some of the nodularity. This was a pheochromocytoma, purely cystic for the most part. So again, you've seen a range of pheos. You've seen a whole lot of variation. And again, let me remind you that in terms of the vascular lesions, pheos can enhance significantly, and a 60% or 70% washout would not be unusual. So again, a lesion on our the early phase imaging 60 seconds out, over 120 Hounsfield units, surely over 130, is a pheochromocytoma till proven otherwise. Okay, what other lesions are there? Well, one of my favorite lesions is a lesion that at times could be a great mimicker. It's adrenal myelolipoma. It's a benign tumor. It's non-functioning. It's usually older patients. It's composed of mature fat cells and hemopoietic tissue. That's why it's called myelolipoma. It can have calcifications in addition to fat, and sometimes the calcifications are what really helps me make the diagnosis. And although most of them are in the 5 cm range or 3 to 5 cm, they can be as large as 17 centimeters. Now, the thing about myelolipoma is it's an uncommon lesion, but it can at times create pitfalls. One of the things is they can spontaneously bleed, so it's one of the causes of spontaneous adrenal bleeds. 
Many surgeons typically will remove them if patients are symptomatic or if it's over 5 cm, because over 5 cm, the chance of it bleeding increases. It's also one of the lesions that grows over time, but it's benign. Now, the range of fat in the lesion is what at times can be tricky. I also will mention that at times it has brown fat, and people have shown PET CT scans that are positive for, for um, adrenal myelipoma, so that's one of the pitfalls on PET. But you see, this case is a large right adrenal mass that's essentially all fat, okay? There's a mass effect, and you see the outline a bit better on the coronal views and on the 3D volume rendered coronal views. Myelolipoma, no gift difficulty. When you measure it, this measures minus 92 Hounsfield units. That minus 70 to minus 100 is very, very classic. And here it is with the cinematic rendering. Again, you can see as I do the cinematic how the lesion, because it's all fat, kind of looks transparent as opposed to solid. And so just a really nice example, classic myelolipoma, no problem. Myelolipomas can be bilateral. Both of them have a lot of fat. The one on the left obviously is much larger. You can see here it measured about minus 48 Hounsfield units. So bilateral myelolipomas. Again, the one on the left you worry about only because of size. Here's another example. This case shows you several things. It's a large myelolipoma, but it shows, unlike the last two cases, it only has a little bit of fat present. But you also see punctate calcifications. Now, when, when you see any fat in an adrenal mass, I understand you could say, how do I know it's not a carcinoma? But carcinomas are irregular, and when I've seen fat in carcinomas, they're very large lesions and very aggressive. This is a myelolipoma, calcifications, particularly punctate calcification, foci of fat, a lesion that's well-defined is an adrenal myelolipoma. Just really nice images showing you the relative paucity of fat within the lesion, but those punctate calcifications really help me in making the right diagnosis. Another example, back pain. Here you see a lesion that's all fat, but you see some high density centrally. And the reason this patient had back pain is because the patient had spontaneous bleeding previously into the myelolipoma. So myelolipomas can look like this, but when you see that swirling centrally, you got to think about prior bleeding. As I mentioned, over 5 cm, most surgeons will say to remove these lesions because of the increased propensity to bleed. Just a beautiful example of that, pushing on the kidney, pushing on the liver, and pushing on the IVC. Okay, classic diagnosis. And here again, if you measured, you could see that increased density. Now, we mentioned things that bleed in the adrenal, anticoagulant therapy, metastasis, underlying primary tumors, pheochromocytomas, and myelolipomas. Here's another example of a myelolipoma that bled almost the entire lesion is fat components, except for the higher density which is nicely shown here, which is the patient's um, bleed into the lesion. Now, this patient barely fit in the scanner, but look at the size of this mass. Again, I'm thinking primary adrenal carcinoma. It's a huge mass, mottled attenuation. I don't see any active bleeding, but even if I did, I would have thought a primary adrenal mass, like a malignancy that bled. Pushing down on the kidney, again, you go through a differential of bleeding lesions, but it's so large, I have to worry about underlying malignancy, be it a pheo, be it a primary adrenal carcinoma or metastasis. This was resected. It was a bleed. Here it is actually the first scan just before the patient presented with the acute abdomen. It has a little bit of fat in it. But again, so myelolipoma is one of those that can be a difficult diagnosis. Here's another one, patient with a large mass, over 10 centimeters, region of the right adrenal gland. With contrast delayed phase, you see lots of cystic components. I guess you could think about, could this be hemorrhage? Could it be a missed hemorrhage? Is there an underlying tumor present? This lesion is going to be removed. And this was a... Um, myelolipoma that had previously bled. So once things bleed, they're large, you don't really appreciate the myelolipoma, you may see none of the fatty component, and it can be very challenging. So I've mentioned several things that bleed, but let's do this. Let's stop here.
And then let's come back and let's finish up part four, where we'll cover adrenal hemorrhage and some of the miscellaneous lesions that we need to think about. Be right back. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.